We're so glad that you joined us today. We're excited to share an encouraging word with you today entitled, Get Me to a Safe Place. We're going to look at Psalm 63, and we're going to uh, read that today as we recall David's run into the wilderness from, and a lot of people say, well, it could have been from Saul, it could have been from Absalom, but anywhere you go, you see that he's on a run. He's in a place that 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 he's not um, familiar with, but he makes that place work for him, and I'm going to show you how he does it. That's why we're calling today, get me to a safe place. In Psalm 63, it reads as such, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where, it, where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory as I have seen thee, have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. I will bless thee. thus what I bless thee while I live, I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall make my I'm sorry, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou has been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followed hard after thee, thy right hand upholded me, but those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go down into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for the foxes, for foxes, but the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that swear by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. In this passage of scripture, as I said before, we see that David, the background of the scripture, David is running from his enemy. It, it is, it, in other words, human opposition has overpowered him into the place where he just can't take it. They had to take him to a different place. As they take him to a different place, he goes into a desert, a wilderness. And as he's in this wilderness, David, he starts thinking. And as he starts thinking, it, it, this, this, his battle cry is like, hold up, wait a minute. No, 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 no. The king ain't supposed to be running like this. Something's out of order. And so when he stops for a moment, he stops and he writes a psalm, a psalm in the midst of his trial, in the midst of his situation, he writes a psalm and he writes a psalm and he talks about, uh, and he talks about, I call safe places. In this psalm, you're going to find four safe places that David found. And, 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 and as he uh, tried to get his balance, uh, get his his momentum back, his strength back from running and, and being fearful and, and, and not being confident, but now he's in a place where he's going to turn it around. Maybe some of you are like that today, that you've been in a place where you seem like it's just one thing after another. Uh, uh, this happens and, and that happens, something else happens, and when this go down, that go down. Uh, the thing of losing a loved one, loss of job, losing money, not working, not, you know, the, 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 the COVID uh, 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 pandemic has just overwhelmed us, even to the place where we as church people, our people of the, of the, of the kingdom, we can't go to the sanctuary to praise God like we used to. Amen. Because we're in a place of seeing like a wilderness. That's why we're dealing with this today. Because we want to deal with this wilderness experience. Four places that David saw that was helpful to him. And it helped him renew his spiritual passion. It helped him get back 
his spiritual passion. Don't you want your spiritual passion today? Don't you want to be back on top? You remember when you were on top, when you could you know, say, I'm running for my life, I'm running for my life. I'm running. For, if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I got Jesus on my mind. I'm running for my life. And that was yesterday. But today you're facing an issue. You, you, you beat up. You killed the Goliath, but today you're running. You understand what I'm saying? You killed the lion and, 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 uh, and the bear, but now you're running. You spoke the words over Goliath and said, I come against you in the name of the God of the armies of Israel, but now you're running. Same thing with Elijah. Had 450 prophets got killed, and then Jezebel came against him, and all of a sudden you see Elijah running for his life. Same scenario. Amen. But there's a time and a place where you're going to find that you might be in that situation where you might be running. And after a while, you got to stop running and you have to get your spiritual passion back. So let's deal with these four places. Four places. Because these four places help you to, 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 to get your, your, your steps back. Get your order back, get your uh, confidence back, get your faith back. It, it helps you to get back to where God wants you in the first place. Some things come, amen, only to get you to seek the mind of God. Now look at this. Four places. The first place that David deal with, and I mentioned it just a few seconds ago, we find from the second and third verse, it says, and David said this, he said, to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, oh my goodness, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. And so one thing we find out from David, David loved the, the sanctuary, amen? And in and, and the sanctuary, and what, what, when you remember the sanctuary, what happens is it brings what we call eternal perspective. Eternal perspective means that I know that this is a temporary problem. I know that God can handle this. When I go to the sanctuary, ain't nothing better than my God. Ain't nothing that can that that's uh, that's bigger than my God. My God is bigger than anything. And, uh, you are God, little children, have overcome them because greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. We find in the sanctuary that that's a place of safety. Amen. It's a safe place. It's a safe house. Amen. It's the type of safe house where people cannot infiltrate in your mind because you keep God looking big. So in, in your distress, as you're running and as you're fighting and you're trying to find your feet, your, uh, your footing, then what happens is you start thinking about the sanctuary. David, now, remember David said in Psalm uh, uh, 27, uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall I be afraid? When the enemy, even my foes, come up against me to eat up my flesh, they shall stop me to fall. And then it goes down to about verse 4. And it says, one thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's what he wanted, eternal perspective. Eternal perspective is this is where I want to be. I want to be in a place of worship. So when you're away from your sanctuary, you have to create a sanctuary where you are. Create a worship atmosphere that will bring the eternal perspective of God bigger than anything. When the saints of God go to worship, oh my goodness, kingdoms fall, the devil uh, trembles, and the thing is the saint of God is fortified when we put God in the sanctuary where we are, amen? So so the thing is, he, he in other words, the, the Bible talks about, and in, 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 if you look at this story, in 2 uh, Samuel about 16 chapter and about 14 verse, it talks about how they were running, they came by the Jordan River and David refreshed himself. And, and a lot of people believe that after he refreshed himself, he went into the desert. As he goes into the desert, he gets to the place where he says, I remember the sanctuary. 
Oh my goodness. See, a lot of times the enemy doesn't, he doesn't, he don't want you to reflect on the sanctuary. As much as we've been away from church this time, some of y'all I know are, there, are just dying uh, to try to get to get back to church and you want to get back to church. But you create a, a worship experience right where you are. You create a sanctuary. Amen. And your strength will come back. Your spiritual passion will come back. Amen. He stopped everything. He stopped running. He stopped fighting. He stopped panicking. Amen. And he started looking for his safe places. He started feeling for his safe places. It was the safe place where he where he knew that if I get to the safe place, anything wonderful can happen when God is exalted. Amen. As Bishop Norman Wagner used to say, anything wonderful can happen when Jesus is exalted. Amen. So he wanted to find a place where I don't care if I'm not in a building, I'm where God is. So wherever that, that my worship is, that becomes my sanctuary. Uh, do you have a sanctuary where you at right now? Do you have a sanctuary? Amen. All he could, he, he, uh, could do is remember that God loved him. Look at, you know, Lamentations, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. He just started thinking about how good God is. Woo, just be in the sanctuary with the music, be in the sanctuary with the singing, be in the sanctuary with the praise leader, in the sanctuary praying, in the sanctuary worshiping. That's the place he wanted to be. Amen. And I hope that's the place you want to be. That's number one. So the first place that David saw, he saw in his mind, he saw the sanctuary. And when he said, get me to a safe place, I want to get to a safe place, I, I, I got to have a sanctuary experience. I got to have a sanctuary experience. You got to have a, sometimes you just be watching on, on Facebook or on uh, uh, live streaming where we are, but it's for you to worship where you are. You create that atmosphere right where you are. Just stop for a moment. Give God some praise right where you are. Magnify him. Praise him with me. Don't just watch me, but get with me as I get to the sanctuary. It's a safe place in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. I worship. I worship him today. I thank God. Amen. So stop your running. Stop your panicking. Stop being frantic. Stop fighting. And get to your safe place. Amen. The sanctuary. Number two. Number two. Number two. Amen. I could really stay at the at, at, at number one forever. I could stay there. The sanctuary. The sanctuary. The sanctuary. Amen. But but and that's the house of God. And I know we're not able to go as much as we should go right now. But the thing is, when it's time to go, the Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves as the matter of some is. But as more as you see the day approaching, encourage one another. Let's go to church, y'all. Let's get back to the house of God. Let's get back to worshiping. Let's get back to praising him. Let's get back to hear the choir singing. Let's get back. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's time to get back to the sanctuary. Amen. Even if you have to get to the sanctuary right where you are, you make that worship atmosphere. Can you worship God in your own home? You know, that's one thing as we were in the sanctuary and as we was at church, we were trying to teach you to worship God at all times. That's why we quote to you, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Your house should be a house of prayer, a house of praise, a house of safety, that you have safety in your own house. If you don't have it in your house, find a room where you can have a safe place. It's just you and God, and nobody can disturb you. Amen. When you're in your safe place. Number two, you got to get to number two. Number two, number two. It's kind of, you get it from verse six and seven. It says, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Let's deal with verse six. All right. The, the, the number two place is the night room or the night watches. Amen. It's a night room. Amen. It's a, it's a place. Amen. When you think about this place, I'm going to take a little time with this. Amen. Because 
It's in this place that you remember, hallelujah, that, that the helpfulness of God. In the sanctuary, you remember, amen, that, that uh, I say in the sanctuary, you got the eternal perspective. But in the night watches, you, you start focusing on the helpfulness of God, how God has helped you in times past. So it was easy for David to leave Jesse and go to the battle uh, to take food to his brothers as he to see what the war, how the war was going on. And when he gets there, Saul says, I mean, they, they find out that Goliath is cussing out the people of God. And David says, is there not a cause? And so they, they, they tell David, David, you, you know, you're too young for this. David says, sir, you know, I remember the helpfulness of God. When there was a lion that came against the sheep, God helped me. When there was a bear that came against the sheep, God helped me. And this Philistine, that this giant, amen, the same God that helped me then is going to help me now. And so he reflected back on the helpfulness of God. One thing he had in common with all his problems, somehow he saw God help through them all. God's help through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all. And so the thing is, and, and, and so the, uh, the, 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 in Joshua 1 and 5, God says, I will be your help. You be bold. You be strong. I got your back. And that's what David is, is, is going to. He's thinking about how God had his back. He thought about how God always watched over him, how God had put him in position. Man didn't put him up and promote him. God had promoted him. Amen. And so sometimes when it gets to it, and I'm going to say this, if your help uh, is the, it ends with human uh, help, you're going to be here for a great disappointment. If your help doesn't end with God is my help, Amen. Then you are going to miss it. Paul said it like this. Uh, 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 having obtained help from God, I continue unto this day. Amen. The same thing with every saint of God. If God doesn't help us, amen. We, we, it, 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 well, if God doesn't help us, we can't be helped. But when we start thinking about the, the night room, it's that night time, it's that, that night room, when that night watch, when you're about to go out, you think about your day, you start thinking, God help me today. God was on my side. Look what God did. Amen. He didn't leave me alone. I didn't get everything I wanted, but I know I got, look, I'm, I got a roof on my head. I got food in my stomach. I got food on the shelves. I got, you know, hear what I'm saying? I got money in my pocket. You know, God has been good to me. Amen. And if you don't have that, amen, God's still good to you because you didn't have all that but still God provided for you even right now amen so in the night room amen we reflect on the helpfulness of God amen and God is our help so number number seven I mean uh, uh verse seven let's go to verse seven to get number three so we talked about eternal perspective we talked about uh 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 and, and up under the helpfulness of God with the night room. Number three, we're talking about safe places. This is David. He's sitting in one place, but he's mentioning all his safe places. Amen. It's like safe house in Denzel Washington, not even in the movie. Ain't that something? Amen. You're in the safe house. He ain't bringing no enemy to you. Amen. Ain't no enemy can break in. Amen. This is a safe place. Safe place. Safe place. Amen. Number three. Amen. Verse seven says, uh, because that has been my help, that's, that's what, uh, uh, therefore, in the shadow of th thy wings will I rejoice. Another translation says, under the uh, protective wings, under, under, uh, under your protective wings will I sing for joy. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to sing for joy when you are on the run. And it seems like the devil's on your back trying to get you to turn back, whatever, things like that. But I'm trying to let you know that in this special place, in this safe place, it's protective wings. Up under protective wings, amen, amen, you'll see that it reflects on God's protection. Eternal perspective, 
helpfulness of God. And now we're talking God's protection. God's protection. So when we start thinking about the wings, and, 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 and I know if I say wings too many times on Sunday morning, somebody's going to feel like going to wing stop. But anyway, but my, my point is this, that, that in the protective wings of God, God's protection, that David said, I will rejoice. In other words, he was in a situation where he's supposed to shut his mouth. He's supposed to stop the singing. He's supposed to stop the rejoicing. He ain't supposed to praise him. But when David thought about how he was protected, he's like, I'm singing like a bird. Amen. Because I know I'm protected. See, when you got that kind of confidence, oh, my goodness. When you got that kind of confidence, it'll make you sing. And that's why the enemy don't want to hear the church sing. Because when the church sings, it talks about the protection protection of God. And when we talk about the protection of God, the devil know he got to come back another day. He did, oh, I got to give it up. They talk about protection. Amen. God is their protection. As long as they know God is their protection, what can I do? I got to get them when they're running, when they're fearful, when they're scared, when they, if they're frantic, you know, they don't know who their protection is. But when we start, stop. I sing because I'm happy. I'm not Kirk Franklin. I sing because I'm free. You know, and when you start singing, what happened? He put a song in my heart today, a song of rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the thing is, I got a song in my heart that the, that the angels can't sing. Redeem, redeem. Amen. So that's, can you imagine the devil trying to hold you down and trying to stop you? And all you do, you got to gasp for air. And all you can do is say, redeem, redeem. Oh my, I've been washed by the blood of the lamb. I've been redeemed. So protective wings, uh, it, it deals with God's protection. And, and David said, I will rejoice. I want to show you a couple of verses real quick. I know we've been in this verse all this time. We're coming back here. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm just going to read a couple of verses just to encourage you, build you up today. Amen. In the word of God, Psalms 30, I mean, Deuteronomy 32 and about 11, it says this. As an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttered over her young, spread it out aboard her wings, taketh them and buried them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. So what is it saying? In, in verse 13 it says, he made him ride on high places of the earth, that he might uh, eat the increase of the fields. And he, he made him so suck honey out the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. What, what is it saying? It, it, it talks about how Moses reflected on how God just brought the people of God out on wings. And the, and, and the, the, the picture denotes that it's such a safe place that it's just a place of freedom and rejoicing. We're free because the Son is made. Jesus said, "You, if the Son therefore make you free, you shall be free indeed. And we're free. Amen. Watch this. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 91 and 4. Amen. I hope you're getting some out of this today. hope this is encouraging you. Psalms 94 and 91 and 4. It said, He should cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Up under his wings, you're going to trust. I know ain't nothing going to happen to me if God's got me under his wing. And guess what? That's where you are, up under his wing. Even in this pandemic, God got his churches up under his wing. Amen. You think that we're by ourselves. We're not by ourselves. Amen. We got God, amen, that, that's carrying us through this pandemic, even now. On eagle's wings. Let's go to a couple more verses. Some, I mean, this Matthew, Matthew 23 and about 37. I'm going to read this one. Oh, Jerusalem, Jesus is saying, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest, that killest the prophets and stoned them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together? Even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you would not. It's not that God can't protect you up on his wing, but you have to allow God to do it. God wants to do it, 
but you have to submit yourself up under his wing. The Bible says, submit yourselves under the mighty hand of God. So in due time, he will exalt thee. Ain't that something? Look at this. I'm going to give you one more verse. Let's go back to Psalm. This is good. Psalms 51, 57 and 1. This verse is the bomb. This is the bomb. Amen. I, I'm telling you, you better mark this in your Bible. Watch this. And this is David. All right? All right? And so this is one time he was fleeing from Saul. Again, it said, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusted in thee, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. This is the bomb. Amen. That I, that I want God to hold me up on his wings until this pandemic goes over. Don't you need, don't you, isn't that your prayer today? Lord, keep me up under your wings until this pandemic go over, until this problem go over, until this situation go over. Comfort me. Watch over me. Lord, I'm going to trust in your wings until this calamity will be overpassed. Ain't that something? Amen. Look at this. Yes, in the shadow of your wings, this is an amplifier. Will I take refuge and be confident until calamities and destructive storms are past? I don't know if you're going through a destructive storm, but if you are, the wings of God are here to cover you, amen, and protect you, amen, even as you go through, amen. So what God does, he replaces the fear with confidence that permits uh, that permits you to sing with songs of joy. That's a blessing, amen. I got one more place to go to in verse 8, amen. So we talked about the sanctuary, which is the eternal uh, perspective. We talked about the night room, which talks about the helpfulness of God. We talked about the protective wings, which talk about the protection of God. We're just going down just a review, and then we hit the last one, and this is uh, in, in, verse, in verse 7, in verse 8 of Psalms 63. It says, My soul followed, follow it hard after thee, Thy right hand upholded me. And so the last point is, in, in different translation, it talks about how is his strong hands. Amen. Strong hands. That's what we're saying. The fourth one is that David stopped thinking about not just his wings, not about the just sanctuary, not about just the night room, but the helpfulness of God. But he started thinking about how strong God's hands are. He started thinking about that. And as he started thinking about that, what happened is he started reflecting on uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 um, God's strong hands. So that's, that's the perspective about this is God's hands. Amen. How strong they are. Amen. And I like this because the scripture talks about God's hands. And look at this Psalms. Um, no, this is Isaiah 41. Look at this, 41 and about 10. You like this one. 41 and 10 got a lot of good promises in it. But verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Whenever we start seeing God, we talk, we talk about the hands of God, especially the right hand of God. We talk about the authority of God. Even though David was going through, he still knew that God's authority, God had spoken some things over him. God had, they had already anointed him. Saul had anointed him, and, and God had made some promises to David. David had a relationship. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. David had times with God, and he came out the cave talking about, I will bless the Lord. And then many other afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. And so in David's mindset, the thing is, he started thinking about the strong hand of God. If God's hand is in my life, I don't care what happens. If God's hand is in my life, it's better than any hand that's in my that, that's been affecting me. Any hand that's been affecting me, it will fail in comparison to the hand of God in my life. Amen. And so the fourth place, it deals with strong hands. And as I think about this, I think about that that 
when we think about God's strong hand, it gives us confidence. That's where our, our faith comes from, that confidence that God is able to help no matter what. See, when we talk about God's strong hand, we're like, God can help no matter what, no matter what it is. Ain't nothing too hard for God. You get that? So nothing too hard for God. So, so, so what happens is when we start thinking about God's strong hand, since we go to the sanctuary, it gives us a spiritual mindset. Then even when we go home, we're in our beds, it's still, oh my goodness, got to still be thinking about the goodness of God. And then we start thinking, oh, wait a minute, I'm up on this wing. But now, oh, we're talking about his right hand. His authority over the earth. He spoke some things. He called those things that be not as though they were, as though they are, as though they exist. Amen. And he'll say whatever. He'll open any door that needs to be opened in my life. He'll shut any door that needs to be shut in my life. He'll protect me from any foe, uh, 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 enemy that I might go against. Amen. In this life, ain't nothing too hard for my God. So I was thinking about this, and I, as I end this up today, amen, I started thinking about how it gives us confidence. And so I, I, I got this quote. And look at this. I, I, I got this quote. I'm saying it's not my original. Confidence is a state of mind and heart that permits a person to act with assurance that yesterday's defeat or failure would turn into tomorrow's victory. Y'all get that? Let me do that again. Confidence is a state of mind or heart that permits a person to act with assurance that yesterday's defeat or failure would turn into tomorrow's victory. In David's mind, when he got, he said, what he's saying is, when I get up in the morning, we used to say that in the morning, when I arrive, the morning, when I arrive, you know. But David felt like if God gave him another day, if God raised me up in the morning, I'm rising up in victory. Somehow I'm rising up in victory. If, if, if the sanctuary don't do it, the night room would do it. If the night room don't do it, the protective wings don't do it. If the protective wings don't do it, God's hands would do it. Amen. And what I'm telling you today is that you can wake up tomorrow, can be a better day than today. And what I'm saying to you, that's what uh, 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 Elijah, amen, when he came, he said, tomorrow about this time, Things are going to change. Maybe that's a prophecy for your life today. That what you're going through today, tomorrow may be a deliverance for you. Tomorrow could be a better day for you. Amen. If you are in a safe place. What's a safe place? Amen. And that's why we're looking at these four safe places. And I want to say this. Because a lot of times we talk about things and we don't put it into practice. But I saw someone in the Bible put this into practice. I, I can imagine maybe they took David's psalm here and put it in practice in Acts chapter 7. Amen. As I end this up, I want to end this up on, on, on a high note tonight. Uh, amen. Today, in that so when, when Stephen, Stephen was, uh, 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 was being stoned. Amen. He was uh, being uh, persecuted because he was a believer. And the thing is, and as he was dealing with his, his, his situation. I want you to see what helped him at the end. All right? So in 7th chapter, in the 54th verse, Stephen had been preaching and talking about that, that Israel's history and how God had helped them through it and, and God had brought them to the day. And, and so, and then he goes and, and he calls them. He gets to the place and says, just because you're stiff-necked and, you, you, and, and you're uncircumcised in your hearts and your ears, you are resisting the Holy Ghost. And they, they pre he's preaching, he's rebuking them, and they're thinking that people are getting upset in verse 54. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. But, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, see, that's what I like about it, look up steadfastly into heaven. Notice what he did. He had people gnashing on him, but all he was doing was looking up into heaven. See, look where he got to. He got to a safe place, his safe place. Watch this, all right? Looked up into heaven, amen, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing 
on the right hand of God. The authority. Amen. I'm telling you, when you see the authority of God, you're not scared of what man can do to you. When you see the authority of God, when you see how vast God, how big he is, when you can see that, if you put in your mind the strong hands, oh my goodness, look at this. So, all right, okay, uh, 56. And he said, Behold, I see heavens open. And he declared this. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord, cast him out of the city and stoned him. And witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Talking about Apostle Saul, Apostle Paul in the future. Amen. And they stoned Stephen, calling up on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Nothing stopped him. Amen. From the, the strong hand of God. And he kneeled and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. What am I saying? This is exact uh, practicum. This is not just a lecture. Somebody think it's a lecture this morning. But we're in a practicum. Amen. We're practicing this and we're living this. Amen that there might be times where you might be persecuted, you might be scorned, you might uh, 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 be talked about as sure as you're born, as we used to sing. But I'm telling you this, no matter what you're going through, amen, if you can see the strong hand of God, ain't nothing uh, that, that this natural world can do to you. God's got your back. And Stephen, amen, from that point right there, went straight up into heaven. Into he looked, he said, Lord, receive me. <laughs> I love that. Amen. And he said, Lord, receive my spirit. Amen. In other words, he transcended his problems. He transcended his 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 his, his persecution, his trouble. He transcended. It's the same thing that David did back here. He transcended it because he went to God about it. Amen. You can transcend your issues today if you go to God about it. Amen. So as we as we as we end this message up today, we we're, we're saying that you need a safe place. Everybody needs a safe place. Everybody needs a safe house. Amen. Everybody needs a place that they can run to in the time of trouble. Amen. The Bible said the Lord is the Lord is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. Very present help. Amen. So we don't have to be afraid of anything that's going on. We have to be afraid of the virus. We have to be afraid of the vote. We ain't got to be afraid of the protest, the rioting. We ain't got to be afraid of, 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 of oppression. We don't have to be afraid of any of those things because the God that we serve has a strong hand. We found him in the sanctuary. We, 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 we meditate him on him in the night room. We are resting in his protective wings. And when we look at him, we see strong hands. Amen. And so today, if you are not saved, you need to be saved. And the Bible says that except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I don't care what goes on out there, but if you are not saved, you can't get to the protective arms of God. You can't get to that. It, 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 because you have to have covenant relationship with him. And you get covenant relationship by being baptized in the name of Jesus. You take on the name. That's a covenant name. Amen. You get filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues that lets you know that God is on the inside. And then you live a life that glorifies God. Amen. That's why you need to be, if you don't have a church home, you should come to the city of praise. Amen. And if you're not saved, you don't have a church home, we want you to go to our website. On our website, uh, you'll see at the top is a place that says, I'm new. Go to there, give us information. Say, you know, I, 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 at that place, you can ask for three things. You can ask for prayer. Say, pray for me and my family. Yeah, we'll pray for you. 
Number two, I want to know more about the church. I want to know about membership and what it takes to be a member. You can find that there. Number three, if you're not saved, say, I'm not saved. I want to be born again. Can, uh, can someone contact me? And we'll have ministers that will contact you and tell you about the plan of salvation. We'll even make an appointment to get you baptized in the name of Jesus where all your friends and loved ones can see you get baptized in Jesus' name. And then we will pray with you to receive the Holy Ghost That because everybody needs the Holy Ghost because it's the down deposit on heaven. Amen. And you want the Holy Ghost. And so if you don't have a church home, you need a church home, we want to be your church home. We thank you for being a part of our broadcast today. We're praying that you find a safe place. If, there, if, if there's trouble in your life and you feel that you just can't make it, the thing is call us. We're here for you. Amen. If you feel like you're overwhelmed, the Bible said, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. And that is, lead me to where I, what we do, we'll lead you to Jesus. Amen. It, we can't do it ourselves, but God in us is helping us to help people make the rapture. We want you to make the rapture. We want you to live for God. And we want you to be in, in, in great relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we leave the broadcast today, we just uh, pray and ask God to help us to help somebody make the rapture. We hope that somebody is you. We want to help people make the rapture. God bless you. Get yourself to a safe place. In Jesus' name, God bless.